Don't install one of these before you watch this video because I just tried and made a couple mistakes you have to avoid. Hey, today we're unboxing the WeBoost cell phone booster and attempting to install it. I hope I can install this on our Pleasure Way Ascent Class B RV. I'm gonna take you along for the ride. I'm not the most mechanically inclined, but I saw a couple of photos of ways people have installed this that doesn't seem too intense. Doesn't involve any drilling holes or anything like that. So if that's you, come along the journey with me and I'm gonna see if I can install this today. It's a little hot outside, but I'm going for it. Well, let's start by unboxing this puppy. Okay, when you open the box, everything is nice and labeled. They have a setup example diagram. They got steps one and two and everything's labeled. So this looks like we can do this. Look, we can do this. So instead of looking at all the pieces and all the things I have to do, I'm just gonna focus on step one. I'm gonna do that first. If I finish that, I'll move on to step two. Just read this whole thing. It's actually really short and straight to the point, but it doesn't cover everything. The rest of the steps are actually on these little cards that are wrapped around the pieces. So I read this, I think this is my first step. They say to like test it out before you do it. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> that might come to bite me in the butt. Step one, insert the antenna cable through the mast and connect the 25 foot cable. So I found the 25 foot cable, it's labeled right there. Okay, now we need to find the antenna mast. Guessing it's this one. This has to be the mast, it's not labeled, but it looks masty. Does that look like a mast? Looks like a magic wand, abracadabra. <laughs> okay. 25 foot cable, mast, we can throw all the trash on the ground. I should have brought scissors. Wow, they put these on here really tight. Cut the cord. Okay, I think I got this, you guys. I'm kind of winging it, but okay, this guy I'm putting through here. I'm guessing because this is gonna screw into the base. So I'm feeding it right through. And then that's gonna go and connect to the end of the 25 foot cable right here. One thing I'm noticing is the build quality on this is super high quality. This does not feel like cheaply made at all. Okay, nice and tight. I do remember reading something in here and it says, use thread lock on all threads. Look like they provide a thread locking blue little glue thing. It doesn't look like a super hardcore glue, so you can still get it off, but it's gonna keep stuff from rattling off. I screwed this in, but I'm gonna unscrew just a little bit, add a little thread lock and we should be good to go. So I should not be doing this on our table, but. Oh, I'm sweating already, you guys. I'm in the car with the AC on and I'm about to go outside. It's really hot out. It's probably 95 degrees outside, but I think I did it, you guys. Step one, done. I hope I did this right. It looks like boom, boom, boom. Okay, let's keep going. Step two. Oh man. Step two, we do have to go outside. Connect the cable to outside and, and uh, I'm seeing some diagrams here. All right, I'm grabbing this guy because it's the one with the spring in it. It says antenna spring, side exit adapter. Looks like there's some brackets in there. So I'm gonna mess around with this stuff for a second, figure it out, I'll come back and tell you how to do it. Okay, I really hope I didn't mess this up, but okay, 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 let's figure this out. This diagram right here says that the it's gonna come, where'd my piece go? That diagram says that it's basically gonna screw in here. The cord's gonna come out of this little side thing but when I'm trying to feed the cord through here, I'm like, how does that fit? What? Am I missing something here? It definitely doesn't fit through there. Oh man. Okay, figured it out. Don't thread lock this right here, the, the antenna cord to the 25 foot cord. Don't thread lock that until you feed it through this guy. Um, it took me a little bit, I got that off, and then I was able to get it through this side mount. So it goes antenna, mast side lock attachment you feed it through and then the spring is the last little part right here and then you connect the 25 foot cord okay step three this one right here says step three place inside antenna in weak signal area at least 18 inches away from the booster 
at least 18 inches away. So it's not saying put it near the booster, which is this guy, I guess, right here. It's saying put this far away from the booster. I was thinking it was close, but I think you put this in the front of the cab. So it's near your cell phone. And then this booster will be in the back here near the entertainment center. This is literally the easiest step. I'm just taking this to the front of the vehicle. Step three, done. Wow, I'm killing it so far, you guys. <laughs> Hope you are also doing this with me and loving the process. Okay, so we're on step four out of six. Wow, okay. Step four has to do with this guy and it's actually a two part step. The first step is just sticking this in a place near power. I'm gonna put it up here in the entertainment center little area. There's an outlet perfectly up there and that's where I've seen all the other Ascent owners mount the Wii Boost booster. The second part of the second step is the hard part. That's where I'm gonna actually have to feed the cables through and figure out how to get them to this. Now, I promise you I'm gonna show you this in a way that doesn't involve drilling. I learned this in one of the Pleasure Way groups on Facebook, so shout out to the guy. I'll put a screenshot uh, to the original post where he showed photos on how to do this. Okay, okay. For step four, it actually comes with this little back right here, which you can actually drill into the wall, but I'm not gonna do that because uh, that's a little above my pay grade. So I'm gonna use this stuff right here. This is the Velcro. I use this stuff all the time in this RV so far, and I'll link to this in the description below. Look who it is, Mr. Kaizen! Shout out to Kaizen, all the way from the ground! Chelsea yeah. came to join. What Where? do you think of the Weeboos so far? I don't know, I haven't used it yet. That's solid. That is solid. You can see how sweaty I am already. I haven't even gone outside yet. We got the AC running in here. I just sweat very easily, but we did it. We got this thing mounted to the ceiling. I haven't ran any cords or anything yet, but it's looking hopeful. We are almost to the end of step four. Part two of step four is a little bit harder. That's running the cables. But I think what I'm gonna do first is actually figure out how to mount this thing on the roof. This is the mount that came with the Weeboost. It says ladder mount, C instructions. And I'm not sure if this is gonna mount up there. So uh, I'm gonna have to get a ladder and see what's going on up there. And if I can find a place to mount this. Am I missing some sort of instructions? This says refer to the installation guide for more details and instructions. And this is all they give you right here. Just a picture, but I'll try and figure it out. Guys, if you say we boost, we boost. So I think I figured out this piece right here. Okay, so it basically goes like this. You got your U, then you got this guy with the little M because your pole is going to go through here. Then on this side, according to the very tiny photo, I think it goes big washer, locking washer, and then nut. This is just my guess, but I think that'll work. That's gonna really lock it down on that side and it's gonna lock around a pole. The question is, do I have a pole up there? I don't think we do. Uh, I think this is made to mount around a ladder, but I think what we have up there is like a track mount system. So I don't know if this is gonna work or not, if I'm gonna have to buy another pipe or or if I'm gonna have to buy another piece. All right, we're outside. I'm going to attempt to go over there and see what's going on, see if there's a place to mount this. But I am proud of myself for getting this far. Okay, we got the antenna, the spring, the little thingy that the wire comes through. We got the bracket on, which I know you're not supposed to do this yet. I just want to see it. And then we got this little guy here. So let's Hi. see. I'm kind of having an oh duh moment right now because I'm realizing how long this is. And this is gonna stick so far off the top of our already tall RV, right? I actually have seen people mount this, just the antenna to the little bottom down here. I think I need to do that. So I'm gonna see if this thread lock is able to unscrew and I'm gonna reverse all this thing and make it shorter. Major lesson learned, don't put Loctite on everything. This has been super hard to get off and <laughs> I would probably install this I should have listened to the direction. I said, do a soft and saw. I said, no, I'll be fine. They say to like test it out before you do it. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> that might come to bite me in the butt. That might come to bite me in the butt. Cause this is actually super hard to get off. I'm gonna get a wrench and see if I can get this Loctite off. It's not that hard to get off if you only put like a dab or two, but for this one down here, I put way too much on and it's coming back to haunt me. Okay, got one of these guys. Looks like the tool for the job. Bye. Okay, maybe this tool is broken. What is going on? Ah, sweet, okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. It's like almost like I need two of these. 
Okay, this is the biggest wrench I could find because leverage. Okay, this is not working. Mistakes have been made. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. I'm gonna try this. It's like a more close fit. Let's see. I might hit myself. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no. Oh, I got it. I got it, you guys. Oh my goodness. Never again. Never again. <laughs> wow, so I'm sweating so much, but that really shows the build quality of these things because I was just wrenching down on this piece so hard and there's literally no marks on this. This must be like super hard in steel or something. I don't know. Fixing my mistakes. There we go. This is better. crazy and I don't know if it's meant to be this way. Probably, they probably thought this through. I don't know if I did this 100% right, but this guy doesn't work up here because there's this track system. But the little washer nut, it comes with, fits perfect in this track system. I slipped the nut right through here. It slid right through and the washer fits right on top and it just mounts right here. I think I might be good to go. So basically this nut goes underneath the track. This washer goes above the track. I think I need to flip this upside down so it doesn't rattle but I think this is literally the easiest install you can do on the pleasure way. Crazy. That was crazy. I did not know I'd be able to just mount it right in the track system like that. I don't know if that was intended. It was mentioned nowhere in the manual and I didn't see anyone online posting about that, but I honestly didn't do that much research on videos is specifically to the pleasure way. So if you have a track system like that on your RV, uh, it might just fit right in there. That was literally the easiest thing ever. And uh, what I had to do is flip the washer, kind of was like the opposite way I thought it was. And that actually made it perfectly tight, no rattling. And it's a nice short setup that will still be able to clear branches and things like that. Now it's time for dinner with the fam, but then afterwards I'm gonna come finish this up. The last step is basically connecting that 25 foot cord back I'm gonna actually run it through the back door. I read online that the cord is shielded. It's like very strong, so you can run it through doors, close it indoors, it's totally fine, it doesn't damage the cord. And then I'm gonna run it up through what they call, I guess, the valiance up here. I'm gonna run it up through here and then up into the cabinet. So I wanna have it so there's not like wires going everywhere. That's my goal, but I also don't wanna drill any holes. So I'll take you along on the journey, let you know what I learned along the way. And we should have this thing up and running by tomorrow. You ready for dinner? Are you ready for dinner, Casey? Hello. Hello. Just gonna go for a quick swim before dinner. You gonna go for a quick swim, bud? All right, mommy's gonna dive in. Watch her form. That was amazing, cousin. Wasn't that impressive? Do you wanna go to mommy? Let's go in the pool, buddy. So what's on the menu? <laughs> Salmon uh, with cauliflower rice and veggies fresh from our garden. Ooh, fresh from the G-Town. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> All right.
right, that was an awesome swim and dinner sesh with the family. I'm back out here. I'm determined to get this done before tonight because we're going on a trip tomorrow and I want that cell phone booster. There's my little wand. No, oh, that's what I'm looking for. What I'm doing next is I'm gonna take the 25 foot cord up. I'm gonna hook that in. I'm gonna run it through the back here and then I'm gonna run it inside and then we'll figure out the inside when we get there. I'm also gonna take this thread lock up there and I'm finally gonna thread lock it. I learned the hard way. Don't do this from the beginning. Wait till everything is good to go, then come back and thread lock it. Another thing I'm figuring out is there is kind of like a thicker part of the wire right here. Let's see. Right there, right when you connect it. It's a little bit thicker right there. And the pleasure has these little plastic caps at the end. You can actually stick it underneath here and pull it. And it gives it some tension. This wire is just gonna stay right there in the track nice and clean. Then the plan is to run the wire right over there, just through the door. I've seen a lot of people do this because the wire is nice and strong and shielded. It doesn't hurt the wire at all. It also looks fairly clean. You just see a tiny bit of wire coming up and over and then that's all you see. On the pleasure way right here is the back valiance. If you reach your hand right over the top underneath the screen shade, you can feel just a little bit of a gap right there between the suede wall and the wood cabinetry. That's where I ran the cord down. Let me show you on the inside. So this is the back window shades and the cord you can see comes right down through there. Now, I don't know if you noticed in this house, but the first time I did this, I just came right underneath the zipper on the back screen. And then I realized when I was up on the ladder, oh shoot, if I do that, I won't be able to zip shut this screen. I guess I could zip it shut all the way around and then bring it all the way to the top right around the wire. But that's annoying. I'd rather be able to zip down both sides. So I actually felt around the top of the screen and there's Velcro at the very top. So if you have a pleasure way, feel around the top, pull the Velcro down on the screen that attached to it there. And you can run the wire right above the Velcro and in and on the side of the Valiance. Okay. Now I need to figure out what to do with all this. Now this is the entertainment center, so to say, where it will plug in eventually. I haven't plugged it in yet. But all these cords are into the TV. They go through a pre-drilled hole that's down in the corner back there. I don't know if you guys can see that. The Weeboost kit came with a couple other things. One is these, what are called cable mounts, and they look like this. You see this? To be honest, I'm not exactly sure how these work. Let me look. I may have to end up Googling this one, um, but before I do, I'm just gonna play around with this and see how you could even use this to mount this. I don't really understand. So looks like on the back is like a 3M tape, right? So you stick that on, but then like, what do you do with this? Like, oh, maybe they go with this. This is a bunch of black zip ties. You would think they'd explain this in the manual, but what this is, is you stick this anywhere. It's a 3M mount, boom. And then you can stick a cable tie through it, just like that. Swoop, fits right in there. You put the cable on top and then zip it. So these actually are gonna come in handy. My plan is to take the cord right here, run it up uh, on the inside of the shade so we can still pull down the shades without interfering and cable tie it all the way. There's actually a pretty good like two inch gap in there all the way along here and then get to that hole there, get it up through the corner. That would be amazing. If I can get it up through the corner, uh, I'm gonna be so proud of myself. But if not, I could always, I don't know, I'll figure out another way. I got one clip in and I'm thinking, I don't wanna go clip this whole thing across and then end up with a ton of wire up there because this is a 25 foot cord. So what I'm gonna try and do is actually run it all the way up through there. So I'm trying the hardest part first was getting through that hole over there. And then if I can do that, then I guess I'll work my way backwards because I'd rather have the wire living up there. There's a little bit of room that feels like above the shades there. So I feel like I could have the bunch of wire, like the extra stuff up there. So let's see. You guys, that was so easy. I just got it through there. I can't believe that. Every time I do a time lapse, I have to tell the camera how long the time is supposed to go. And I assumed that was gonna take me like 10 minutes. I set the time for 10 minutes and boom, within like a minute, I got it right through there. I don't know if there's a magic tip to it, but I think just, man, the build quality on these pleasure ways is so awesome. It's routed already. So when you feel your way back there, like with one hand, 
you can feel a little corner hole on the bottom and on the top, right? And so this cord, just because it comes coiled, it has a natural bend to it. So what I did was I stuck the cord through the hole. It took me a, a little finagling to get it in there. And then I kind of twisted the cord so that it curved up. It just has a curve a tiny bit and it just popped right through. I was so surprised. I thought that was gonna take me a long time. I thought I was gonna have to go buy some sort of wire fishing kit to fish it through there. But wow, this is exciting. Okay, so it's going in there and boom, coming right out. Look at that. Okay, so this is gonna go plug right in the top. All right, since I Velcro it in there, it makes it really easy. This is the outside antenna, so I'm just gonna put that right there. And before I stick it out, I might as well stick the inside antenna on there as well. That's this guy, remember this guy? So what I just did was I did give myself a little bit of slack on this side uh, that goes around to the outside. Just in case I ever wanna move this around, I'm not tied in, I don't have to undo all my zip ties and everything. And then this side here, you just have to make sure you have enough room between the hinge and here, but it looks like I got it. It's a little bit kinked on this side, not too far bent, um, but I think we should be good to go. We are so close to being done. Okay, so the last part is the zip ties. And these bad boys here, you really have to kind of figure out, I don't know, just mentally how these are gonna work. So how I'm doing them is the sticky part's gonna come on the inside of this right here. It's gonna come on the, the inside like that. And then this little zip tie part is gonna come down. So I can pull down and cut it out. That should tighten the wire in there and then I can cut it with scissors and it'll be nice and clean. These zip ties can be a little sharp when you cut them though. And I'm just afraid when someone reaches up there to grab the shades, pull it down, it could scratch them. So I may have to come back in here with a file and just like file down the edges. All right, let's finish this thing. Okay, oh man. <laughs> all right, so I finished getting it all up in there and I found some pro tips as I was going. Pro tip number one was about how you put these little guys on these little guys, because the direction really matters, especially when you got big hands and you're trying to get up in between a small space right in there. So what I did was the sticky side facing me, so I kind of stuck it on the inside of the, the shades right there. There's a good two, maybe inch, inch and a half gap in there. You sneak it up in there. Uh, the other thing was this guy. You want the zip tie facing this way actually towards you as well. You see how the little boot is facing towards me? So sticky side facing towards me, boot facing towards me. You stick it through the hole like this. And then what I found was pull this all the way tight that way. Then stick it through this way and you're able to get it really cranked down nice and tight without reaching up in there and getting your fingers stuck. Tip number two with these guys is pull the wire down, stick them on the wire and get them like this on the wire. And so I would crank them down on the wire first before I stuck it up in there. And then I would stick it up and stick it on the wall, hold it for 30 seconds and we're good to go. Now I only did like maybe five of them, one, two, three, four, five, and then six, one right here on the corner. I'm not doing any up there, but I have a lot left over, which is good because I may have to run the wire to the antenna, which is gonna go up there somewhere. Uh, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that tonight. <laughs> Step five and six, the power supply. This is, well, step three I think was the easiest, which was put the antenna, oh, like far in the front. Um, but this is probably the easiest one, five and six. You just gotta plug it in. There's already an outlet out there and I'm just gonna plug it right in. Now the antenna putting it in the front, I'm not actually sure how I'm gonna do that yet because I could run the wire, like I guess along the ceiling or I really don't wanna drill a hole in there and try and run it through like behind the bathroom. So I'm actually not sure what I'm gonna do with that right now, but I do work from back here a little bit. So I know it says keep it 18 inches away. So maybe I just run the antenna like back here, back in the back cabinet, um, just for now, uh, just so it's a little bit further away from the booster. I think that'll work, but if we're in the front, then maybe I just pull it up front with me and just kind of have the cord laying out here for now. So I'm not sure about that. If you guys have a solution on that, that doesn't involve drilling through this wall right here, um, please let me know. All right, last step. Not gonna lie, I'm a little surprised I'm finishing this tonight. I thought I'd have to go to the hardware store. I thought I'd have to order a part to hook it to the ceiling. 
I'm honestly surprised I was able to get through all this. The instruction manual was lacking on a lot of the stuff. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys. I hope you learned from my mistakes and you can accelerate your success when it comes to installing this yourself. So I guess the last thing to do is test this thing. I haven't really even tested it yet. I just powered it on. So let's give it a test. But before we do, let's just recap a couple of mistakes I made that you don't have to make when you're doing this process. Number one, don't Loctite stuff right off the beginning. The instruction manual says, hey, do a soft install. I was like, I'm, I'm gonna skip that. Uh, I didn't, I wouldn't recommend that. So don't go loctite stuff because you may want to shift stuff around. So what I did was uh, after messing that up and struggling to un it for a very long time, uh, I finally got it and now it's Loctite and everything's good to go. So don't do what I did. Number two was uh, figure out if you wanna do the long extended pole or you wanna do the shorty. Well, I started following the instructions and I started doing the long pole and that kind of messed me up and I had to undo that. So decide if you wanna do the long or short and then assemble it that way. This last one's a little humbling because I tell like people all the time in our community that we teach how to launch Amazon businesses. I tell them, hey, don't, don't look at like 10 steps ahead because it can be overwhelming. So when I first started looking at all the parts, I was like, I'm just gonna take it one step at a time. And that is typically okay advice, but I think for something like this, you may just want to look one or two steps in advance. Maybe don't look all the way, but just thinking a little bit in advance would have saved me a lot of headache as I was going through this process. You may have noticed by the end, I started planning ahead a little bit. I didn't just go zip tie all these and then realize I had a bunch of wire up there. I started just thinking through a little bit logically, what is my next step and how can I do it a little bit more efficiently? So instead of having to do it two or three times to get it right, I did it right the first time by the end, but it took me literally the whole process to figure that out. A project like this is like anything in life. You don't know if you can do it until you try. And when you think, how can I, how can I achieve this thing? Uh, you will get through, you will get through. I, as you saw, I failed through this process, but it was a great learning experience. And I hope I was able to help you along the way. So when you come and do this, um, you do it even better, even faster without uh, hitting all those mistakes. This is the power of having a mentor. And this is why I always have mentors in my life because you can walk right behind them and you can learn from their mistakes. And that's so crucial. So I hope this video was helpful. Just documenting the process. I hope those little tips and tricks were useful. I was so surprised I was able to just hook that thing right up on the ceiling with no additional mounting software, just the screw that was included. I don't know if they planned that or if I figured it out, but I was pretty proud of myself for being like, I wonder if that fits. And then it fit, it was so cool. And then getting it through there was actually a lot easier than I thought. So if you have a pleasure I ascent, I feel like this video is gonna be just for you and really help you out. But there's also a lot of great helpful tips I feel like in here for anyone installing the WeBoost because I just learned a lot as I went. So if you know anyone who gets this, share this video with them because I hope it's gonna save you so much time and you can just bang out this install super fast. All right, you ready to test this thing? Let's try it. So to test this, I'm gonna disconnect from my Wi-Fi because I am next to our house right now. And I brought the antenna down here. So it is technically 18 inches away from the booster or whatever they recommended. Now, I don't even know how to turn this thing on because that's not even included in the manual, but I guess you just plug it in and you're good to go, okay? So there is stuff in here about like lights, which I haven't read yet, but I probably will. Um, but let's try this out. So let's just go to like fast.com. It's just gonna run a speed test right here. Let's see if we can get it. Okay, so I just ran a speed test. It's looking around like 20 out here right now. Not too good. 18, just so you know, inside our house, for example, we get a thousand megabytes per second. We pay for our high data plan because we do a lot of stuff on the internet. Um, 18 is pretty bad. I'm gonna run this again. Um, it's good to run a speed test a few times just so you get accurate results because it can fluctuate just a little bit. And so let's see what my average is. Right now, just so you guys know, up in the top right hand corner, it says 5G and I have two bars. And it's looking like on the second test, same thing, I'm around 24 megabytes per second. So let's turn on the WeBoost and see what happens. I got the antenna right down here. Let's plug in the WeBoost. As soon as I plugged that in, I did notice my bars, like in the top right hand corner, went from two bars up to full bars. And so we're gonna run another test and see what happens. Just turn on the booster, it's solid green. It looks like it's on, I'm running the test right now. And it's showing me 116 megabytes per second, a huge boost from my previous 18, and a 29.2 upload. So it's 116 on the download, 29.2 on the upload. That's a pretty decent boost for just having this device inside the RV. And that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for joining me in this wild ride of installing the WeBoost and unboxing and all that. If you wanna pick one of these up, I'll put a link in the comments as well as a link to the Velcro, as well as a link to anything else I showed in this video that may be helpful along the journey. And we will see you in the next video.